Hey guys and welcome back. So today I'm going to walk you through the process of my latest illustration, which is a rose and a beta fish. Since painting my circus painting, which was of clownfish, I wanted to paint some more fish and I had the idea of combining it with a botanical element. I've never painted a rose before, so I thought I would do a rose. It's almost kind of criminal that I've never painted a rose before because surely it's like a staple of a botanical artist to paint a rose of some kind. But as far as I can remember, I've never actually painted one. So this is a first. This is also going to be kind of a mini review of the paper that I'm using. This will be the first time that I'm using um, artist quality watercolour paper from Windsor & Newton. So this is cotton paper and it's hot pressed and it's from the brand Windsor & Newton. Actually, I've never tried this paper before, so it's all new. I think I may have lost some footage here and there as there seems to be quite a lot of big time jumps. I thought I recorded more than that, but I guess I didn't or I've lost it. Apologies for that, but we'll go with what we have. And I'm really happy with it. I think the rose turned out pretty well and the beta fish was quite a nice compliment. And yeah, I really enjoy painting this one. So the watercolor paper. So I decided to get the hot press paper because I feel they're a little bit more tricky. I feel like if you've got a good hot press paper, the cold press version would also be good. It's not always true the other way around, so I thought I would get the hot press to give it a good test. I did test it previously in a generic testing video a while ago, where I test out a couple of elements like layering, masking fluid, etc. to see what it looked like and how it handled. But this is a full proper road test of using it in a painting. As you can see, the colours look really nice, really bright and really vibrant on the paper, so it's not sucking up all the colour, making it a washed out image. Some really cheap papers can do that, so it's always good best to work on good quality paper. It felt really nice to paint on, the paint went down really nicely, it didn't do anything too weird. Some papers are really hardly sized, for example the Moulin de Roi paper, from Canson is really hardly sized and so is the Stonehenge paper. I feel like I really struggle to get the colour to go down smoothly. I find it can often have jagged edges like it's kind of been waterproofed in a way but this paper didn't have that problem and the colours went down pretty nicely and I was happy with the way that, that behaved. I think the only thing I will say on this paper is colours do lift a little bit easier on this one than I'm used to, so if you're somebody that likes to do a lot of colour lifting, um, this paper would be a good option for you. But at the same time, I don't feel that colour has lifted too easily, so I could definitely get some good layers in there without the layer underneath lifting up, which is also good if you like to do a lot of layering, which I do. The paper handled the wetness pretty well, it didn't really warp, um, which is another good sign. I would consider papers that warp with the kind of size washes that I'm doing here would be a bit of a red flag, but this was all good. If you are someone that used this, likes to use a lot and lot of water, I would recommend obviously experimenting. But if you're going to do some just small washes like I do, this paper will handle fine. But yeah, that's the paper. I will leave a link to it down below in the description bar if you'd like to grab yourself some. Um, it's really nice. I don't think it will be becoming a staple paper that I use, mostly just because of the price point. I normally use Saunders Waterford paper, which is cheaper than this one, and I like the way it handles. Um, just It's just on the price point, they both handle nicely. There's nothing negative really I can say about the Windsor & Newton paper, just that the Saunders happens to be cheaper.
So back to the painting. I found the bait fish a little bit more of a challenge to paint. There was a lot of folds in the tail and I really wanted to get all the folds in nicely. I found it that I needed quite a lot of layers to really get the dark colours to come through um, and really make it stand out. And it was really challenging to paint the scales as well, like to try and have the scale effect. It was definitely a challenge and it was fun. I also wanted to make sure that the beta fish kind of stood separate in a way, as in it didn't just look the same kind of red of the rose. So I was kind of aiming more for a softer red with this one. So I didn't want to go too dark on the main body of the fish. For those wondering about the colour that I used, the most bulk of the red was French Vermilion from Snellier. It's one of my favourite reds and it works really nicely in this painting with the rose and with the beta fish. I did mix a couple of other reds in, such as Bordeaux from Schmincke, to add some more darkness and depth, as well as some greens in as well to kind of darken it even more. I did at one point have an idea of doing a black background for this painting, but when I stuck it in my digital editor to put the black background in, I found that it didn't really look quite right and I couldn't get it to look natural. I didn't want to paint the background black in the painting in case I messed it up. Um, but I think overall, after comparing and playing with it, I felt a white background was best and remade the piece pop a lot more. I don't know, what do you guys think? I will also leave a list down in the description bar of all of the materials used in this video from the paper to the paintbrushes and the paint colours that I used if I can remember correctly um, but yeah for the brushes I mostly used um, rosemary brushes or Billy Shoal Raphael brushes and these are now discontinued but you can get brushes still from Raphael so I'll leave a link down to those instead of the Billy brushes which are no longer available which are the brown handle brushes you saw me use in the beginning This painting took quite a long time to finish and paint. Even with the bits that aren't included in the video, it still took a really long time. Uh, I didn't want to speed this video up too much, so I cut a few bits out as well, just to have it at a slow enough speed that you can see what's going on and see the painting develop without it whizzing past your screen in a blink of an eye. I know I think a couple of people have said that they like to see we paint the details a bit more, so I thought I would do that as well, so you can see what I'm doing in more detail. If you do like the end result of this painting, I do currently have it offered as a print over in my web store. I'll link that somewhere too. These are limited prints at the moment, this is a limited run to start with, so grab it while you can. It is limited to just 10 prints at the moment. All of them will come signed and dated on the back. So if you want one, make sure you grab your copy before they sell out. And here I'm just going to finish up with some coloured pencils. I feel they can add some more texture and some more depth um, to the piece and just kind of tidy up any bits that I felt needed it. The pencils that I tend to like to use are Faber-Castell Polychromos. However, you can, I do also like um, the Luminance pencils from Karen Dush. Um, but I don't have very many of them and they are a lot more expensive. But Polychromos are also really good. They're really good to get to a nice, fine, sharp point to add lots of details.
and here it is all finished all done here's the zoomed out look of it i'm super happy with it i'm really excited that i've managed to paint a rose for the first time and not mess it up <laughs> and yeah i'm really happy with the combo the beta fish looks really good with the rose and yeah super happy let me know if you like this one too and let me know what you think down in the comment section but that's all for now guys i will catch you in the next video if you want to see more make sure you check out my social media pages which also have links somewhere but yeah i'll see you later guys take care and bye bye